I think I had a near experience with a serial killer in Amarillo back in the winter of 1979. And I was 16 years old. Um, my parents had decided to go out of town and they left me at home by myself for the weekend. And um, so first night out, me and my best friend decided to have a double date. And we went out with our double dates. And um, during the date, I got upset and demanded to be taken home. And what had happened was my friend and I needed to use the restroom. So the the guys found a party going on at a, a apartment complex and they said, they're just going there. People are coming and going. They'll never notice you. So we went in, went to the restroom. When we came back out, uh, I saw my date sitting at a table and he was assisting somebody doing drugs. And it really made me angry. And so I demanded to go home right then and there. I didn't want anything to do with him or, or anybody that knew that much about drugs. So I wanted to just go home and they took me home. My date followed me in or what I thought was my date followed me in uh, behind me. And my parents have a, a, a house that when you walk through the entryway, you can walk in the entryway, you can go into the living room and then you go into the kitchen and then you can come back around through the dining room and another living room. So it's a circular uh, place. And when I walked in, like I said, uh, I, I knew someone was behind me and they came in and the person that was behind me went into the, uh, I, I walked all the way into the kitchen and then this person stopped in the living room and stood in the corner and I could see them out of my peripheral vision, but I never looked at him because I was pretending like he wasn't there. And, um, like I said before, I was really angry with my date and his knowledge of drugs. And so I started mouthing off that he had no respect for life and, um, that I was going to show him something, something if he really didn't didn't have any respect for life. So being a 16 year old and a drama queen that I was, I, uh, I saw a, a bottle of aspirin. My mother used to buy those gallon bottles of aspirin from Sam's. And so I, I opened the bottle and pretended like I took a handful, but I instead just, uh, put him, pushed him in a drawer. Uh, without being seen but again this was all a big show don't ask me why I did this because I have no idea why I did this but um, I, I put on a performance for the man standing in the corner of the living room and it didn't take long maybe a couple of minutes uh, before I started into my death scene and um, I started choking up and and I went around the corner because I was laughing. I had to laugh. And I, I laughed a little bit and then I would come back around and, and show, to show my my date, what I thought was my date, what was going on. And um, during this time, that year in Amarillo, there was a, a brutal murder that was Sarah Dawn Lawrence. And that happened at the end of October. And uh, they did not locate the killer. And this was, this was in December after that. But um, nothing had, had crossed my mind and I continued to, to giggle and laugh whenever I wasn't in sight of this person. And I went into the front living room and that's where I had my final, my final death scene. And I went to the floor, collapsed and giggled. <laughs> now I can tell you that it was quiet in the house and this, the person that was in the corner would walk to one side of the house and he could look through the doorway. I heard a step footsteps and he stood as long as he was staring at me or in my presence, I would hold my breath. And then he would walk around the other way, the other circle, and he 
would stop and stare for a little bit. I guess he was staring at me. I don't know what he was doing. My eyes were closed and I was just trying not to laugh out loud. And um, he did this a couple of times and then my parents' telephone rang and I didn't get up to answer it. And then my telephone line rang. I didn't get up to answer it because I thought this was my date. He was trying to trick me. And so something just told me, lay there, be still, don't laugh, don't let him see you laugh. And, um, but I wouldn't get up, I wouldn't answer the phone. I wouldn't do anything. And then it, uh, maybe five or 10 minutes later, he walked up to me and the, the carpet behind my head moved. So that's how close he was standing was right behind my head. And, um, the next thing I remember, there were lights that flashed through the living room. Uh, the, the front of my the front of my parents house lights came through headlights from from a car and then my best friend and her date I, I I got up I saw them and they were there and then also my date and so my best friend said we came by to check on you because you wouldn't answer your telephone and I said well then we were we were worried about you so I said, oh, it was just, you know, so-and-so was here. My date was here. And he said, no, I just got here. And anyway, the, the, I didn't believe him, but the truth was it's a circular drive and my date pulled up at the same time that my best friend and her date pulled up. And at that point, I just almost fainted because... I didn't know who was in my house, but somebody was had been in my house. And um, it wasn't my date, it wasn't anybody I knew. But I call, the, the police, I called the police, they, they couldn't find anybody. But I do know the facts that this person, his name is J. Kelly Pinkerton, was working right around the corner he, he worked just right around the the corner at 34th and bell and that's where he uh they were following him they had him under surveillance because the police all along suspected him of the sarah don lawrence murder but they couldn't prove it because they messed up a lot of the evidence and um but that night he had eluded the police but it, his workplace was right around the corner from my parents house so he was close and um, also his, his MO is that he would break into people's houses. This is what the police told me, that he would break into people's houses and he thought he was invisible. So him standing in the corner in my peripheral vision was not something that would be unlikely for him to do because he thought he was invisible when he would break into people's houses. And um, also the fact that I pretended like I had taken a bunch of uh, pills and collapsed in a room and a, and this person was not even afraid. They They didn't run. They didn't call for help. They didn't do anything. They just... Um, kept watching me and observing me and getting closer and closer up until the point where this person was standing directly behind my head and um, and and never said a word a very it was just very strange and it and it fits what he did and then um, the rest of the story goes if you want to look it up is that uh, he was convicted later on from a, a, a different murder of a young woman and I believe that she was at work and I think that her place of business was if I remember correctly around 34th and Bell and um, that was this that's the same area as my parents live is also but um, I, I truly believe that what kept me safe and protected was 
the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I have, at that time when I was 16, I, I, I couldn't have told you what the Holy Spirit was. In fact, I've just really the last few years known how the Holy Spirit works and how they, how, how the Holy Spirit can lead you and, and tell you things. And that's the only conclusion that I can come up with of why I acted the way I acted. Uh, um, I never would have done something like that. It was the craziest, uh, craziest thing I can think of trying, pretending like I did that. I don't even know why I thought of that, except for, I believe it was whispered into my ear and it must have sounded like a good idea at the time. But I, 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 I really thank the Lord every time I imagine myself being laying in the floor as an innocent lamb waiting for this person to, to maybe attack me. But, uh, this, the second one that he did was in, I think it was in March or April following that. And my incident happened in December. Uh, Sarah Don Lawrence, his first murder happened in October of that same year uh, of 79. So I, I believe I was in the, the presence of a serial killer and it was just, um, it, it was the Holy spirit that really protected me laying in the floor. Um, and, 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 and something told me just not even to look at him because, um, if I would have looked in his direction it, and, known it was a stranger, I probably would have ran and, and who knows what would have happened. I don't know. I just know that, that everything happened precisely. And, and the fact that my friends came back over was there, there wasn't another minute to spare. If they hadn't come back when they did, I don't, I don't know if I would be telling the story. Wow. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing. If something similar had happened to someone else, uh, what would you tell them? Um, I would tell them to go with, go with their, their instinct. And if there's, if, if there's something that comes to their mind, maybe it is the Holy Spirit telling them to, to do it and just do it without thinking, just do it. And, um, and of course, if you did see somebody in your house, I mean, in your house, I would, I would run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, run, call the cops, something. And so, and yeah, to go with your gut. Wow, that's a really amazing thing that happened. And I'm really glad you're here to talk about it. Me too. And I don't know why, you know, I've asked this a lot. I, I really have when I pray, I've asked the Lord and I don't have an answer, but I, I know one day I will. Why? Why was I protected? Why? And and some of the things that come across my mind is maybe it was because somebody had prayed for me before then. Maybe somebody had prayed for protection over me. It might have been a parent or a grandparent or or somebody. And maybe that was the reason. Maybe maybe I was supposed to have children that I have. Maybe maybe they're supposed to do something maybe it's important and 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 that's why i was protected or uh maybe maybe it just wasn't my time maybe i'm supposed to do something i don't know um i don't know i think it could have possibly been a sign if you will to him that he could have stopped and repented and confessed and not murdered that next woman in uh, March or April of the next year um, because it was so close and I mean I was just thinking wow so if I was going to break into someone's house and you know try to kill somebody and then they commit suicide right in front of me that would be such a bizarre coincidence that it would at least cause me to ask a few questions about my life and my lifestyle and my bad choices up to this point and I don't know either way it's it's a very fascinating 
you know, coincidence or whatever you want to call it. And I, I'm really thankful that, you know, you were protected and thank you for, thank you for sharing. Thank you.